a product manager here at AC Industries, and today I'm going to walk you through some of the selling points and how to use the new portable site pump. Cyclone is able to bend half inch to one inch EMC, EMT, IMC, and rigid, as well as half inch and three quarter inch PVC coated rigid. Uh, with PVC coated rigid, you do a size up. So if you're bending half inch PVC coated rigid, you use the three quarter inch shoe. And if you're doing uh, three quarter inch PVC coated rigid, you would use the one inch shoe. Uh, so you'll see a lot of markings on the face of the bender here. Uh, they're pretty similar to what you would see on a hand bender. So if you're familiar with a hand bender, you'll probably probably be familiar with the markings that are on this shoe as well. Um, so you got the center bend, not just down here at the bottom. Uh, you'll see this for each size, of, um, each size on the shoe. Um, these are used for three-point saddle bends. So there's a notch at 30, 45, and 60, and that's to indicate the center of the bend. Um, there's also a backup 90 star uh, for each shoe size, um, and that's used for when you're doing back-to-back -back 90s. And then there's also the arrow that indicates where the start of the bend would be uh, for each size. And you'll see a number next to that arrow, and that indicates the stub length. Uh, there's also labels on each of the hooks that tell you what size of conduit and type bowings that slot. And then you'll see on the dial on the front here, there's uh, degrees from negative 5 all the way up to 105 um, for when you're doing your bends. And then on the opposite side, there's an offset multiple, um, offset bend multipliers for when you're doing offset bends. Uh, then there's the load location here, which we'll get to in a little bit when we're showing you how to load a conduit. Uh, portable Cyclone is powered by a pipe threader. Um, we obviously have the GD pipe threader, which you can use, which is an 11R pipe threader. Uh, this is also compatible with 12R pipe threaders as well. Uh, so when you first take it out of the box, you'll see that there's a 12R adapter already installed on the back. Um, so if you're using an 11R threader such as the GB threader, all you need to do is take this off. Um, you can take it off using a 3mm metric Allen wrench. All you do is just unscrew the screws on each side of it. And then this will slide right off and you can slide on your 11R threader. Once you have the appropriate uh, adapter head on the bender for whatever threader you're using, whether it be 11R or 12R, you can slide on the pec threader. Uh, one thing to keep in mind when you're using the 11R uh, threader is that because it's octagonal, you sometimes need to ro rotate this slightly to make sure it lines up correctly with the threader. Um, but one, if it's lined up correctly, uh, you just slide your threader over and place it on the back. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is this post here should line up with the hole in the threader. Uh, so this may need to be adjusted slightly if it's not lined up, uh, which we'll go into in a little bit. Uh, but from there, you can just slide on the threader. You want to slide it on until you hear it click into place. So once you have the power driver engaged on the die adapter here, there's going to be enough tension to keep it in place um, when you're bending vertically. When you're bending horizontally, the threader along with the three legs will lay against the table or the workspace that you're working on to keep it in place. There are two tapped holes on each of the posts here. If you want to make your own support or mounting equipment, but it's not required. Similar to adjusting the 11R die head, um, depending on the type and size of threader you're using, you may need to adjust this back plate and post to make sure the post lines up with the hole that's in the threader um, so that the threader can be held in place when you're doing bends. Um, so to do that, there's four screws on the back on this back plate here. Once again, you use a three millimeter metric Allen wrench to loosen these screws, and then you can rotate this plate um, to whatever location it needs to be at and then just tighten those screws back up. So this angle indicator dial on the front of the bender can actually come off so you can store stuff inside of here. You'll see this tab that says open underneath it. All you do is flip, over, flip up that tab and then this slides right off. So you can store it in the 12 bar adapter or in your pendant and speed control right inside the bender itself. And to put this back on, you just slide it on, and give it a little flex and it'll slide right back up. Make sure the tab is locked in place, and then you're good to go again. So when you're typically operating the threader, what you would do is you would use this trigger that's right on the threader itself, press this down to um, rotate the threader, release it to stop rotating the threader. And there's also a direction switch underneath the trigger. You use that to change the direction of the threader. Um, but each bender will also include a variable speed pendant and switch control. 
Um, and you can use that to kind of slow down the speed of the bend as you're going to get more precise bends. Um, so the way this would work is you plug one end into the threader and you plug the other end into the wall outlet or uh, the extension cord that you're using. And then from there you can use the pendant to control the bender and threader. Uh, when you are using the threader, or when you are using the pendant, uh, you're going to want to lock the threader. Uh, so to do that, you just press down the trigger and then press the lock button on the side. And then from there you can use the variable speed pendant. And then to change the direction of the threader, you just press the trigger again to release the lock. Flip the direction switch and then press the trigger and press the lock button again to lock the threader. And then you can go back to using the variable speed pendant. So when you're first loading in your conduit, you want to take the threader off of the bender. It makes it easier to load the conduit in um, the first time. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you're looking at the right groove for whatever size and type of conduit that you're bending. In this case, we'll be doing half a GMT. So I'm going to slide this into the half a GMT groove here. And then all you want to do is just rotate the, the shoe until the conduit's kind of locked into place pretty well. Uh, and then from there, you want to look at the angle dot, the, the indicator dial on the front of the bender and make sure that the arrow on the shoe is lined up with the zero of the angle indicator dial. And then once that's lined up, you can take your conduit out. At this point, you can rotate the shoe all you want, but your bender will still be at the correct zero position, so you don't have to worry about it throwing up your angle when you do start bending. Um, this is true as long as you don't switch to a different size or type of conduit. Um, so now that we have it set to zero, we can slide our threader out to the back. And then once that's on, loaded on there, you can slide the conduit back in and then start bending. When you're doing any bends for conduit sizes that are larger than half inch EMT, uh, you're going to have to adjust the angle of the bender to make sure that you have no space to load the conduit in and make sure it's level at the start of the bend. So to do that, on the back of the bender, there's an angle adjustment lever. You just pull this up to unlock it, and then you lift up the bender uh, to adjust the angle, and then push the lever back down to lock it in place, and now this will be uh, locked in this position. So once you have it in the correct position, you can load in your conduit. In this case, it'll be one inch rigid. So once again, you want to make sure you're looking at the correct groove for that size of conduit. And then you're going to slide it into that groove. And then you're going to rotate the shoe until it's kind of locked into place. And then from there, you're going to use the angle dial at the front of the bender to make sure that it's zero correctly. Make sure that the arrow lines up with the zero on the dial. And then from there, you can take your conduit back out. And once again, at this point, the bender is zeroed. So as long as you're, you stick with that same size and type of conduit and you don't touch the front dial, you can rotate this all you want to load on your threader and the bender will still be zeroed correctly so you'll get the correct bend once you do load the threader. Right now we have a bender set up for a half inch EMT bend. Uh, we have a conduit loaded in, we have a threader installed on the back, and we have it set to zero. Uh, so one thing to keep in mind is there will be spring back, uh, depending on the size and type of conduit that you're bending, it'll vary. Uh, in the instruction manual, you can look there and it'll tell you what the spring back value is for each size and type of conduit. Um, so you're going to have to compensate for that somehow. There's two ways you can do that. You can either go that many degrees over where you're bending to, so in this case, I'm going to bend to 90, so I'll probably go to roughly 95. Or you can start your bend that many degrees below zero. Um, so if it's a five degree screen back, you will start at negative five, for example. Um, in this case, I already have it set to zero, so I'll just go five over. Like I stated before, you can either use the trigger on the threader to do the bend, or you can use the pendant by just um, plugging that into the threader. Uh, we recommend that you use the pendant because you can get a little better control with the variable speed on here, but you can always use the trigger on the threader itself if you'd like. And then once I have bent to the angle that I want to go to, when I'm using the um, pendant, all I do is release the lock, reverse the direction of the threader, and then push that lock back in, and then I can bend it back to zero. Um, if you're not using the pendant, all you do is just switch the direction of the threader, then pull the trigger. You wouldn't have to worry about locking it and unlocking it.
the first bend I'm going to show you how to do is a back-to-back -back 90. Uh, this is a pretty common bend for electricians. So I have a mark on my conduit that's lined up with the arrow um, above the shoe. And next to that arrow, there's a deduct length. Uh, for this one, it's six inches. So what this is, is you would subtract that from the stub up length that you want. So if we're doing a 10 inch stub up in this example, we would subtract six from 10 and mark our conduit at four inches. So that's where this mark is right here. And that's lined up with the arrow. Um, so I'll do my first bend and then we'll take it out and do the second bend of the back to back bend. Now that we've done the first bend in the back to back 90, we're going to flip the conduit 180 degrees and load it in with the unbent part first to do the second bend for the back to back 90. Um, so for this one, we're going to do 20 inches between each bend. So I measured 20 inches from the end of the conduit to this mark right here. And this mark is going to line up with the back of 90 star on the bender. Um, then when I do the bend, I should get 20 inches from one bend to the other. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is you want it, the conduit to be in a single plane going this way. So that when you get the, when you have the back track bend done, it's all in the same plane and everything's lined up straight together. So I'll do the 90 degree bend and we'll get our back track 90.
to do a three point saddle bend. Um, this is probably the most complex bend that an electrician would typically be asked to do, but with a portable cyclone, it makes it really easy, especially when you're dealing with larger sizes of conduit, like one inch rigid, for example, which are pretty tough to do on a hand bender. But with a portable cyclone, it's a breeze. Um, so there's three parts to a, doing a three point saddle bend there's the center bend and then the two outer bends. Um, so these notches, the rim notches on the shoe, there's one at 30, 45, and 60. And you're going to want to line up your center bend with one of those three notches, depending on what angle you're doing your three-point saddle at. So in this case, we'll do a 45. So we're going to line up with our center mark at the 45-degree notch. And then we're going to do that bend, and then flip the conduit over and do the two outer bends, which will both be 22 and a half degrees to offset that 45 degree bend. So I'll start with the 45 center bend. cyclone versus a hand bender is you kind of get that tension in there as you get it locked in. So you can use that to rotate the conduit to make sure that it's all in one level plane so that when you're doing, when you have all three bends done, you don't have a wobbly piece of conduit that's not straight. situations where you don't have the end of the table to bend um, against or if you just prefer bending it horizontal you can do that with this bender. There are three legs on the back. Um, there are three quarter inch conduits. You can also put your own legs on here to extend these or shorten them if you need to. Um, but you can lay this on its side to do horizontal bends as well as vertical bends. And when it's on its side it works the same way as it would when it's uh, vertical, um, bends the same way. One thing you might notice is the threader might slide off the um, 11R or 12R adapter slightly. Uh, this is, might just be because you don't have the adapter set close enough or far enough away from the bender. So like I explained earlier, you can unscrew it and slide it where it needs to go. Now just a quick overview on how to use the portable cyclone. If you have any other questions, uh, please contact your local sales manager or you can reach us at gardnerbender.com.